Yes, ik zie dat we live gaan, dus we moeten even wachten. Yes. Oké. Okay. Nou, um, one minute. Maar de video en de woonkamer moet even uit. Hij zit er mensen. Te kijken. Ik zie het uit. 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 Dus, um, de deur wordt nu een beetje dichtgemaakt. Hi mensen, welkom. Dit is de een live lecture van um, Uni Arte. We hebben een artist talk vandaag. En um, we zijn heel blij om even Avancia Damberg te introduceren aan jullie. Zij zal vandaag... Uh, Can you do it in English? Uh, yeah, artist even. So welcome everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm switch. Yeah, I'm switching. <laughs> I'm doing multi-language, like uh, so everybody can have an uh, introduction. So um, welcome everyone. Um, this is uh, one of the lectures of Uni Arte, and we have today artist talk with Afansia. She will be giving a presentation about her work. And also, uh, yeah, just show us some nice uh, visuals. Conta tu rende, bomini, is a artist of the Uni Arte. Avenostin artista avancia Danberg, put by Duna un presentation, baboso tour. This a presentation lo baita na inglés, pero tu idioma por hasi pregunta na final. So at the end, of course, Fancy will be giving the lecture in English, but at the end, everybody can um, ask in, in any language and she will answer um, your questions. Dus ja, uh, yeah, ik zou zeggen, Avancia, go ahead. And ja, um, yeah, if you have questions, write it down and at the end of her talk, she will be answering them. So yeah. Let's go. Thank you, Sharelli, for the introduction. So, my name is Afansia Melfina Amanda Damberg. I was uh, born in the north of the Netherlands, in Friesland, Leeuwarden, from uh, Curaçao parents. And my mom always kept my art, or let's say drawings, since I was three years old. And she kept them in scrapbooks and uh, she still has those and she's still my biggest collector. At the age of seven, uh, we returned to Curaçao and I went to elementary school, Albert Schweitzer, and I went to Adolphus College. And so this is me being fascinated by uh, drawings and drawing myself, but also instead of Barbies, I also got Barbies, but I was really psyched to get tools. And uh, then I went to Curaçao and Radovus College. Here you see um, a picture of me at Radovus College during the job orientation day or the market day, job market day. And the artist Nelson Carrillo, he gave a workshop uh, about sculpting and he showed how you have to make a head. He was quite impressed with the head that I made. And uh, I met him today, I mean this year again, in uh, February at Lisette for Bohm's house. 
it was a very special moment for me because he kind of planted a seed because at that time I did not know that I would be an artist today. So the job orientation day was not far off. So, so when I was in the Netherlands, um, I thought art is something I should cherish as a hobby and not make it my job. I was afraid that if I did, I would kill the joy. Well, this is bullshit. Nevertheless, I went to study marketing economics first and uh, just to be my own boss. That was always the drive, basically. But in that city, in Eindhoven, I met uh, students from the Design Academy in Eindhoven. And then I realized I wanted to turn my passion into my job. So then I finished the marketing management, but I applied for art academies. And uh, yeah, I got into the Gerrit Rietveld Academy. In Curaçao, I was doing a lot of fashion drawings because my mom, she used to drop me at the public library. And after doing my homework, I would dig into the fashion magazines and I get inspired and I would do sketching. And I had a lot of drawings, a lot of designs for fashion. But uh, those got me into the Gerrit Rietveld Academy amongst other works that I made. Um, but I did not continue in fashion. You get one year where you can taste a little bit of everything. So the teacher at, the, at my first year, he, he told us to make giant heads of uh, papier mache and uh, papier mache. And he was thrilled with the head that I made. Uh, and he wanted me to make the head of every fellow student in my class. Here you see also some drawings. I developed my, uh, yeah, my kind of love for surreal art during the, the Rietveld and just skills drawing and painting, but, well, more painting. But at the Rietveld, you don't really learn to paint. You don't really learn techniques. What you do learn is to teach yourself. So you are kind of autodidact in a school, but that makes you always, that always gives you the drive to keep learning yourself and keep developing and keep studying yourself. So I got an introduction with all kinds of forms, performance, and uh, in this case, it was design. The assignment was to make a suit that is a chair. And I took the chair of a throne So in 2007, I graduated at the audiovisual department, VAV, in video art, installational art, and animation. That's what I learned uh, in that department, and I loved about that department. So I chose the direction of animation, and, uh, and I graduated with video installations and animation. So here you see a picture of... Uh, a basement with a big screen and it's actually about silence a space and silence next to a space that is super busy not noisy loud and i was looking in whole amsterdam for spots that were quiet just one step next to the busy busy noises so it was called silent spaces and um this one is in the subway, in the metro. I joined the driver in the back where all the passengers go in. It's loud. You have the sound of all the, the you know, of the train and, and the people and everything. But when you're with the driver, it's super silent. It's really quiet. And then we went into the tunnel from Central Station to Amstel Station. It's called One Zone, this movie. And... Uh, it was magical to see all the lights of that tunnel. It was really beautiful. So I filmed that and, and this movie has no sound at all. It was also selected for the Netherlands Film Festival. And an article was written about it in the Volkskrant. So 
lucky me. And um, so I, I always start with a concept. That's something that I, I learned at the Art Academy. And then I will see how I'm going to crystallize uh, the concept, which material I will use. So it's, uh, it's easier to do it with paintings, but that's for me a safe way and not so challenging. So painting and drawing is for me more like a basis. And um, it's a medium that is very accessible here in Curacao. Everybody suggests that if you're an artist, you are really good in painting. But uh, my starting point is to show a little bit more than that. Uh, something else, which is art, in such a way that it doesn't create a barrier though, but it invites it invites you in, it draws you in. So here you see the, the work, see, the sea and me. And uh, I, I want like the normal regular Joe to also see my art and not think of it like, that's really for people that like art and stuff. No, I don't, I want people to, uh, to, yeah, to come and see it and be put in another track for a while and not look at art with a capital A. So the CME is uh, what I, the first work I did after I graduated from the Rietveld. It's an installation that uh, I film the belly button of a person standing in the sea, in the, in the, in, in the, in the water, and the water is sort of the fluid of the womb. And the, the reason is that we have an expression, a saying in Curacao that you are, your birthplace is where your umbilic, umbilical cord is buried. So I film the navel or the belly button of the person. You don't see the face. And you just hear the voice over and I ask, what does the sea mean to you? And people have a kind of love-hate relationship with, uh, with the sea. They're kind of afraid of it, but they also are very attracted to it. And uh, I film how they are standing in the water. Are they standing really like strong as a rock or are they dancing freely or shaky? So this was... Uh, this work I've been able to do uh, doing a artisan residency, my first artisan residency at Instituto Buena Vista in 2008 with support of the Mondrian Fonds. So that was the first uh, support I got from Mondrian. And later I uh, I, made, I love to make work that you need to do some research and history. So starting from the Caiketeos, like the first inhabitants of the island till today, and then uh, dig into the, to the history. So that's also a key thing that I like to characterize my work with. And I got really inspired by a historical lecture from Albert Wiels in the NAM about family names in Curacao. So I was really fascinated with how the family names came about. So this was uh, the starting point for me to make map of Curacao. It's made with uh, paper and it was during an exhibition created by uh, Jennifer Smith called um, Exploring the Past to Envisage the Future. And it was about the uh, abolition of slavery 150 years ago. So that was the context and to, to show the freedom or the abolition in a, a different way, like a fresh way. So after the abolition, it was that the, the people that got freed from being slaves that they got a, a last name because their African name was taken away from them. It was diminished and they need to have a non-existent name, surname that was required by law. And then they could register at the Kranji. 
at the time. So this is a study I did about those names and at the location where they settled around that time. And then, so basically the name originates from that area and I placed the name at that area. And this work grew, got bigger, and I made a permanent version of it with ceramics that's hanging in Kranji, because that is sort of the best place for it to be. So if you need to renew your passport, you, you could have a look. And during that exhibition in 2014, I also made a video with the, with the word Thank you, Danki. It's about being grateful for uh, my African heritage, like the, my ancestors who survived. They survived uh, the ships, the, the Atlantic uh, trans, uh, how do you say? Passover of, uh, from Africa to the Caribbean. They survived it, so they're survivors. They also survived the slavery itself that I exist today. And I thank them standing in the water as they came from the other side of the ocean. And uh, I will show it to you. There uh, we go. Basically, with my body, I shape the thank you, and then with my arms, I share, I shape the word thank you as well, danki, but with a hug because brasa is also the word for arms. So that is a bit of a word thingy, and this will come back that you will see how I love to work with texts and words and. But not only with installational arts, I, I express the history of Curaçao. Uh, I love to dig into the history and heritage of Curaçao and the research. But one way to, a more common way to show that is with paintings. But then I do it in a like Baroque style. So here you see Echoca Fatal di Diana, or the Fatal Strangulation of Diana. And um, it's, it's, it's normal that in the European tradition, uh, stories were told through paintings, 
like biblical stories and, and they were painted in a Baroque style and they hang nowadays in those fine art museums. And, um, but we in Curacao don't have so many of these uh, classic works that tell the history of Curacao slaves. Uh, but this is just as much history. So this is why I chose to use uh, classic Baroque style of painting to tell the history. And then uh, this was for an exhibition, Tula Historia Compati, created by uh, Jose Tissen Royer. Uh, and it was meant to be in the Tula Museum. And that's where I made it for. And now it's hanging there since February. It's about the slave girl, Diane. Uh, she was executed just like Tula in the month of September in 1795. Her hands were cut off and she was hung on a tree until she suffocated. The reason is, is that she attempted to strangle her master. And the reason why she tried to strangle her master, we don't know, but it's probably because he cruelly deprived her of a loved one, like a child or, you know, that maybe he sold her child or something, but a slave will not do that easily. So there must be a really intense reason. And uh, when I brought it to the Tula Museum, it got a lot of attention and researchers went digging about, because uh, the master was called, uh, um, uh, how do you say? Gentil, Peretz, Peretz Gentil. And then they found out that it was not the male master, but it was the mistress that she tried to choke. So this, will, this has a twist in the story. So I will paint a new painting where the mistress is getting strangled. So I love this. So a new painting will come up. And last year, 2019 was very much dominated by the 30 of May 1969, 30 May, as it was 50 years ago. It was uh, a day that uh, the, the black population of Curacao, the Afro population of Curacao was done with uh, their unequal treatment uh, by the, the white elite. They were poorly paid. There was a lot of discrimination. There were no equal opportunities to grow on the social and economical ladder. And they held a strike. It started from the, the refinery, but it became a uprising. So the shop owners who kind of maintained the situation, their shops got torched in the inner cities of Puna and Otrobanda. One of the leaders was Amador Nita. And uh, I chose to do Amador Nita because he's a bit less, uh, recon not recognized, but Papa Godet got much more recognition. And I, so I made this oil painting about him uh, that I learned from, or that I did a uh, basis of an online workshop called Project Rembrandt. It's quite inspired to watch that series. And another work, that is also historical related is uh, the April murders, the April Morden. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a while back that this uh, topic uh, that I got involved, not involved, but introduced to this topic. First, it was by Albert Schobar, who will maybe still make a play about this, uh, but uh, yeah, it keeps kind of, I keep running into it um, for a mural that we're going to do in Sufisant. I got a lot of information and I got the part of the Chinese in Sufisant. And then I started to do some research and I want to tell the story about the 15 Chinese that got murdered in April. Uh, the Chinese were from, came from Rotterdam and they were the only ones working the hard work of scooping the coals into the, belt, the machines of the tankers from the shell refinery. Those tankers would go to Venezuela, get the crude oil, and they were running on coal. And they were scooping those in. It was very hard work. 
The reason they could do it is because they were high on opium, but they were treated really, really bad. So they were treated like slaves. They didn't even get paid. And they also uh, could not go out of the belly of the ship to get some fresh air on the deck. So the treatment was really bad and they organized themselves and they had a strike. But at that strike, they got just shot and killed, 15 of them. The Dutch government uh, killed them. So these are examples of historical facts that uh, I want to get more into and tell the story. I will um, make drawings about these uh, happenings in uh, cobalt or blue indigo ink. I put them on 15 uh, phases. And these phases um, will go to an exhibition that had to take place in July this year, but it got canceled by the, because of the COVID-19. So I hope it continues the next year. In any case, I will do this work. And um, yeah, so I love that you know, yeah, you read books, you interview people, uh, you go to the National Archive, et cetera, to find a, a whole picture as a basis of your artwork. And then you try to tell the story and have it told in a form of art. Another, another thing that I love is graphic design. Uh, you know, some artists, they love architecture and it, you see that it influences their work. And I love graphic design. So it does seep into my work as well. I love uh, also the power of words and texts. So I try to make it 3D as I'm more visual. And then um, it kind of speaks, it can speak to you. So letters are something or text is something that you also see as a red thread throughout my work. It started in 2010 uh, with a South African friend of mine. Instead of uh, just emailing each other or chatting, we wanted to do something creative, creative and different and have a conversation through 3D text with a blue sky in the back. So that was kind of the rule. In the end, we took pictures and we did email those. But in this way, we communicated. So yeah, that was a fun way and a playful way, but I kept that. And text, like if I do a super interesting Bible study and I get all these insights, I also would like to share those to my art and then I use text. So this humility, gentleness, compassion, and love, amor, those are actually from a Bible verse, like Colossians 3:14 to cloak yourself with these, uh, yeah, with these uh, things. And uh, there was like an ongoing uh, series on different spaces, different places. Uh, Estonia, Madrid, and Aruba. And there you also see the sentence, I feel peace, or how do you feel today, Joa? Yesterday I was so bored. So text is one of the, the ways to express and especially in 3D. I also did it here with the, the anthem of Curacao. Uh, I love the anthem of Curacao. I, I get all emotional at 12 o'clock on the radio and they play it, but I just enjoy it a lot. I love the song and the melody and the words, but a lot of the words, the stanzas we don't sing because then it's too long, but they are very uplifting. So I try to bring those stanzas back in murals or other art installations, text installations, as I did here. This is in uh, here, this is in Pro Santa Marta and during that day, it was balance day by the ministers, government. They were balancing the first two years of their uh, of uh, of their reigning on, on Curacao, and 
I was asked to do a uh, art workshop and I told them to write down 10 wishes they have for Curacao. And those texts I put in a cloud. So it's kind of like a cloud of hope. And this is basically what I also already did in Madrid doing artists in residency. And uh, when I was doing that in Madrid, it was, um, it was the economical or financial crisis in Europe and Spain was suffering in that as well. And this was also kind of like a hope that the people put in their wishes and dreams for Spain. And uh, in this case, the ministers wrote uh, their wishes. Um, one of them is that Curacao leaves the Dutch kingdom. So interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, wherever I get a chance to put in text in the art form, I will do it. Another thing of graphic design that uh, surfaces a lot is my fascination for geometrical shapes. So it started in collages and drawings, but I keep seeing it, I keep noticing it over the years that it comes back. And now it's the hexagon shape, so six lines of figure. You can see it in the Puna wings that I did, that I used geometrical shapes in the background, but also in the colorful steps of Otrobanda, in Otrobanda. So the graphic design in a realistic shape is, uh, it kind of breaks with the environment, makes the object an artwork on itself, an object on itself. It's actually doing collage again, but then, in a, yeah, in a landscape. So there's not much difference with the collages that you see upstairs, with those diamonds and the stairs. That's basically the idea, I love that. And I love to, yeah, to include um, geometrical shapes in nature, in landscapes. So this is something I am still busy with, working on. At the moment, I am making uh, paintings and it's also a way from all the collecting to all of that you have collected to put it in some way back in your work. So I thought I will put all what I've collected in the shape of a hexagon. See also a little bit here, a uh, painting that I'm working on. It's a new series. And it has sand, it has stones, it has all these materials that I found during my walks in nature, strolling in nature. I just love to do that uh, in, in, at the beach or in the Mondi. Also, I like to collect objects that nature has shaped that are not from nature, like plastic. The sun has completely changed the objects uh, and also the plastic, the sea has also shaped them. That's also a material that I'd like to use in art, in my art. For example, this video installation of the sea and me, there were stones in this aquarium that uh, were shaped by the sea and the stones themselves were bricks from houses and tiles but the, the, the sea has shaped it in a really nice design so the sea and the sun kind of make these objects art or sculptures on themselves and that's uh, something i love and yeah so Collecting is, uh, is just a part of my creative process. It happens uh, by walking in nature, but also by taking pictures. I'm not a photographer, but I use photography to collect. And also Pinterest. That's also one way to collect, of course. IDs and also to see what's happening. Uh, just collect what you love. 
and I share those back in uh, Instagram and you will see then a little bit of process of what is collected back in the in my art and let's see so the hexagon shapes is something that I am really excited about now uh, let me show you another uh, work video installation some final cuts so it's a technique that I used uh, in the Rietveld Academy with making screens in any shape you like at my graduation I did that and I continue to do it but in this case it's with the in the shape of the hexagon. And these are videos that I collected over time with no specific purpose yet, but then I can um, show them. Palm trees and cacti are plants that I love to work with and study more. So those are going to be materials that I will make more installations with in the future for sure. So, for example, here you see different waters. The, this water is the foam of Salt Lake in Yantil, and the other water is at Shit de Boca. So in that case, the cleanness and the, the structure of uh, graphic design is a way to hold my artwork. To have it like in a collected form. So, yeah, this is, uh, it went quite quick, my presentation. I think I talked a bit fast, but that's basically what I'm busy with. And yeah, I'm looking forward for your questions, if you have those, uh, if you need any links or whatever of work. Hey, it's Lou. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Hi, Lionel. <laughs> great, great to see some faces. <laughs> Noemi. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions. Okay, I see a question here from Arturo. It's great to see you, Arturo. I think Arturo is one of my fans for a while because he knows me from way back when I started at the Rietveld Academy through a, a friend we have in common that I studied with from Mexico. So his question is, do you think that an artist is born or can you do art? Anybody can do art. I think anybody can do art. Uh, you just need to be introduced to it and uh, it's because the reason I think this is because we all have our inner child and basically it's one way to play but not everybody looks at the world in the same way though so the way I look at the world maybe you don't look at the world that way I see a lot of things and I make I link those things and I put them in a shape uh, or in a thought or an expression not everybody does have that, but you can learn it and you can get into it. Yes. So Nash, you said about enslaved people? Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. So. 
Any other questions? I guess. Ah, Sharel is back. Nice. Yes. Nice presentation, Avancia. I saw some words that I didn't know. So yeah, I've, I, been, um, I've been digging a little bit, but basically I, I wanted to to show these uh, specific uh, ingredients in my work that is history, uh, identity, and um, and yeah, the graphic uh, design. Yeah. So that's uh, because I did not I did not talk about all the different aspects. Like animation is also one thing that uh, I did not get into so much in this uh, art talk. But uh, all my animations you can find on Vimeo if you're interested. And I and how is it for you? Because you lived in Holland and now you moved to, yeah, you've been living back in Curacao for a while. What can you tell us about that, about pr your practice, um, doing your practice on the island? Well, actually, it's, it's a luxury to be here because uh, in the Netherlands, everyone struggles as an artist in general, okay? So it's not that uh, that you automatically, as an artist, you need to that you don't get your income as quickly as you would like. So you get your job on the side, and, but your focus has to stay on the art or else you will lose doing artworks. You, you, it will just die. So in all the, I, I, when I came back to Curacao, I was offered steady income and steady jobs, but I declined them because my main purpose and my main goal is to be a visual artist. So I only look for jobs that are part-time and that will not take all my energy uh, away from being an artist. Um, but I, I prefer to struggle here in Curacao than in the Netherlands. <laughs> now, the thing is also that there are less artists here than there are in the Netherlands. So, for example, it's, it was a really great honor to design the stamps for Curacao. I mean, as a child, I always wanted to be uh, selected for the children stamps, Kinderzegel. But although I thought my, my drawings were cool, I never got selected. But guess again, in 2016, I got to design uh, I got to design stamps for Curacao, and I did a series of the graphic design of the Kaiketio uh, Arawak Indians people, first uh, indigenous people of Curacao. So, yeah, I was really thrilled about that, and uh, that also included a bit of research and uh, you get to you get to learn about your island. So. Also with the, the last names, I learned a lot about Curacao doing that. It took almost two years with the whole research and everything. And the whole the whole history and how Curacao is shaped as a population, it's, it gave me some insights that I had no idea. Yeah, we're in Cabanda, so you hear a lot of the neighbors laughing and yeah. So. We have Raisa uh, greeting. Got that. So uh, and uh, Nash referred back to yes. a comment she gave before. Yeah, I got that. I got that. I said slaves, but it was the enslaved people. Yes. No, cool, Avanza. It's uh, nice to hear. Um, we can check to see if anybody who's live at the moment can have questions. Avancia has her studio at Cartagenestraat. So Cartagenestraat is one of the projects uh, Uniarte is doing uh, right now. And so when, yeah, anybody can go on our website and find the email contacts of Avancia if you want to make an appointment. Uh, uh, mail her for more information that's available. Avanti, I want to thank you very much for this artist talk. I mean, it will remain online, so uh, um, people will definitely get a chance to learn more about your work. 
and um, yeah, have a great Saturday, I would say. Yeah, oh, and by the way, I continue, you know, everybody needs to get uh, income and generate income for themselves, and especially with, uh, you know, with the COVID-19. Um, I was, I give tours, art tours, and I will give an art tour uh, with land art. So that is actually tomorrow. Um, yesterday I did a test, but basically what you're going, going to do is you're going to bike to the Yang Til landscape and there's the salt lakes and make your own land art. So I hope you guys are interested to, to join. If it's not this, this Saturday, I mean Sunday, it will repeat. I will continue to do this. So sign up and enjoy your island. And this one will, the bikes will, we will get them at Bat and Bike and then we'll go. Okay, so you can look on the Facebook page, Art Now Tours. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. We have one question. Yes. If I write, I actually, I do write, but the writings is not something I, uh, that I really intensify so much. The writings I do are more on relational stuff and personal stuff, uh, those kind of stories, but not so much with art. So, uh, but uh, sometimes it's most mostly with those Bible studies I do that I do writings that I go more into a more lecture or more essay kind of writing, but uh, not so much. No. Okay, great. We have another greeting. Hey, Ale. <laughs> Alexandria. She also did a, a artisan residency at. A, Uni Arte, when we were still in Casa Moderna. It's nice so, to see you guys also. <laughs> no, thank you. I want to thank you, Avancia. Thank everyone for tuning in, really. Yes. Um, keep posted. If you don't receive the newsletter yet, please subscribe through the website for a newsletter and you will keep uh, be posting. Right now on the location, we are screening the... Uh, Geographies of Freedom by Miguel Perez Los Santos, a project he did together with Egbert Martina. So um, yeah, there are people watching, coming in or um, today and have been watching some pretty interesting archive material that a lot of people haven't seen. So um, we're doing our best. Me and Avancia will be here. We both have our studio. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thank you. Yes, thank you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.